20th century, an epic nine-year struggle took place for control of Europe, known as the War of the Grand Alliance. On one side stood the Protestant Dutch Prince William of Orange, whose allies included Austria, Spain and Sweden. On the other stood the Catholic King Louis XIV of France, supported by James, King of England, Scotland and Ireland. In 1688, William landed in England at the invitation of Parliament with an army of 11,000 men. This prompted James to flee to France, and soon afterwards, the English Parliament offered the crown to William, who assumed power jointly with his wife Mary. James, however, was not willing to give up the throne so easily. In March 1689, he landed at Kinsale on the south coast of Ireland with over 2,000 French soldiers. Thousands of Catholic Irish fighters quickly joined his forces. In June, William landed at Carrickfergus with a multinational force of English, Scottish, German, Dutch, Danish and French Huguenot troops. A chapter of the War of the Grand Alliance would now be played out on Irish soil. In July 1690, the Williamite and Jacobite armies met at the Battle of the Boyne. William quickly outmaneuvered his opponent, and by early afternoon, the Jacobites were in retreat. James fled to France, while the main body of his army made for Limerick, joined by William's forces. In James's absence, Jacobite hopes were carried by Colonel Patrick Sarsfield, an Irishman who had begun his military career fighting alongside the French army in Flanders. William and his forces reached Limerick in early August, several days ahead of his army's consignment of heavy cannon, ammunition and provisions. Hearing of William's arrival, Sarsfield acted quickly and boldly. He rode out and launched a surprise attack on the consignment at Ballymeaty, County Tipperary, destroying their heavy cannon and blowing up their stock of munitions. The daring escapade bought Limerick time to strengthen its defences and gave a huge boost to Jacobite morale inside the city walls. William was only temporarily delayed, however. He soon brought in new cannon and attacked. On August 27th, having breached the walls, his army attempted to storm Irish Town. The battle was fierce and bloody. The Jacobites prevailed, but only after those without guns resorted to using stones and broken bottles to repel the enemy. By early September, William's army was suffering from heavy casualties, persistent bad weather, and a lack of ammunition. William decided to return to France to continue his war directly with Louis, leaving his men under the command of Dutch General Goddard de Ginkle. It was a significant moment. Of the 21 important sieges that took place during the War of the Grand Alliance, the 1690 Siege of Limerick was the only one to fail. During the lull, Limerick's defenders strengthened the walls and built new bastions. Despite this, however, the tide would soon turn in favour of the Williamites. In 1691, Ginkle won decisive victories at Athlone and Ockram. Thousands of Jacobites lost their lives and morale plummeted. Ginkle then returned to Limerick, the last Irish stronghold, and surrounded the city. On August 25th, he attacked. 60 Williamite cannon and 19 mortars pounded their targets, rupturing the walls and setting many parts of the city alight. On September 22nd, Ginkle led a surprise attack on Thomond Bridge. The Irish were quickly driven back into the city until the town mayor, a Frenchman, panicked and lifted the drawbridge too soon. Almost 800 men were left trapped outside. A terrible slaughter ensued. Those who were not massacred on the bridge drowned in the River Shannon. After Thomond Bridge, Sarsfield began negotiations to surrender. By October 3rd, he and Ginkle had agreed the Treaty of Limerick, signing it on a block of limestone, now immortalised as the Treaty Stone. The terms of the treaty were generous. Jacobites were allowed to return home, join William's army, would take free passage to France with their families. Some 12,000 chose to go to France in what later became known as the Flight of the Wild Geese. Those who stayed in Ireland were guaranteed religious freedom and protection of their lands. 
However, soon afterwards, Jacobite lands were confiscated and the promised religious toleration did not manifest. In the long term, the defeat of the Jacobites in Ireland resulted in a long period of Protestant supremacy, reinforced by repressive anti-Catholic legislation that became known as the Penal Laws.